You're listening to the podcast with a K. Wrong tune. You're listening to the podcast with a K. I'm Christian Corley, and as you can probably tell from the lack, complete lack of reaction to that faux pas, I'm hosting the show alone this week. Uh, the reason for that will become apparent in due course. Brian and James will no doubt turn up on the podcast with a K in um, future episodes not too far away from here. Now, this week, I am going to be talking to Gareth Cavana. He's back. And frankly, it is about time because he's been a very, very busy man with Cutaway Comics. Uh, he has overseen, I think is the best word, the production of a new range of comics from the wider Doctor Who universe. Two in particular, Omega and Eldrad, have been announced and Lytton is a previous one. Now, these names will mean a lot to you as Doctor Who fans, particularly if you're classic, uh, classic Doctor Who fans. Interesting things, uh, finding new lives and integrating in completely new ways. This isn't new in Doctor Who, of course. It happened in the comics in Doctor Who magazine. It happened in the New Adventures. Both of these things mainly happening when Doctor Who was off air um, throughout most of the 1990s and early 2000s. Doctor Who isn't off air right now, so I think that's probably something that we will be looking at later on with Gareth. There's lots of nice things to talk about. There's probably something that isn't so nice to talk about, and that is a rumour that Doctor Who faces the axe at the BBC. Now, this is a rumour that appears to owe its complete existence to a YouTuber. There doesn't seem to be anything backing this up. The podcast with the K team isn't quite as in touch with things, Doctor Who production-wise, as we once were. Somewhat ironic, given that I live in the Northeast and my wife's family are from South Yorkshire, and there's a lot of Doctor Who going on in South Yorkshire from time to time, but that's another matter. The fact is, there is a story going around that Doctor Who is facing the axe. We think, given how long Jody has been the Doctor, that this is not so much Doctor Who facing the axe as Doctor Who facing a new face. Jodie's about to do her third run as the Doctor. She's probably hanging up her Sonic. So, yeah, so that's that's the thing that's going on at the moment. So we would say, I say we, there's just me and Gerald Slithine here at the moment. So I would say, take it with a pinch of salt. Uh, moving on now, and it seems that fans have been calling for Netflix to produce a new season of Torchwood. Uh, this came along as a bit of a surprise to us, uh, it must be said. Um, it was shared by the Doctor Who page on Facebook. And, you know, on the face of it, you know, there is quite a good argument in favour of this. After all, Torchwood was popular. But uh, could they pull it off? John Byron would no doubt be associated with it. Eve Miles potentially as well. But who else? It's, it's very much... Um, cast my mind back to the 1990s when there was this idea of bringing back Blake 7 Torchwood's been off air for a long time now so reviving it, while not impossible Netflix might be interested you don't know, I don't know we don't know um, it doesn't seem as though the Torchwood that we knew, and that we know and love or know and hate or have a love hate relationship with whatever comes along probably wouldn't be that. Then again, it might be. It might be worse slash better. Uh, I've shared this on Facebook with the uh, Facebook followers of the Casterbridge Doc 2 podcast page. We, I'll link to in the show notes. We've got a nice selection of comments. Lewis David Blaney says, yes, great idea. Paul G, no i rather see Dot Who come under the Netflix or perhaps K9 and Company. <laughs> um, Shane Gaffney, yes. Alan Stevens, no, the show was mainly awful. Jeff Waddell, do it if they want. I wouldn't pay for Netflix, so not fussed. Fair comment. Nick Caulfield, 
thought about this, wrote a 400 word comment comparing Disney plus Netflix, BBC and Big Finish and then deleted it. His conclusion was that Netflix won't. They'd never see a return on it. That's a strong point. If the fans want someone to take up the Torchwood mantle, they're better off asking Amazon Prime. I'm not sure on the particular angle of the difference between the two there, but I can see his point. I think overall, though, the rumour, suggestion, desire for Torchwood to be produced by Netflix or Amazon Prime or whoever overlooks one key issue, and that is that Big Finish has brought Torchwood back successfully, much as they did with Blake 7. Now, a couple of other things I want to get through. Um, first of all, uh, Andrew Karma once appeared on the podcast with a K, and we chatted with him, and his book, Script Doctor, uh, a memoir, the inside story of Doctor Who's um, 20, well, the 1989 to eight, uh, 1986 to 89 pe- period of Doctor Who, uh, with a foreword by Sylvester McCoy, is set to be reissued. It's a limited reprint run with a new cover and interior photos published by Ten Acre Films. Uh, it's previously been published as a hardcover in 2014 and a paperback in 2019 by Milk. That's worth keeping an eye on because it's a fascinating story. Elsewhere, Big Finish are making headlines in the Doctor Who world as they ever do. Uh, there's a lot of big stuff going on from Big Finish, appropriately enough. Mark Bonner is returning as the Eleven for the Sixth Doctor Adventures. The Sixth Doctor Adventures, the Eleven, is released in September this year, so that's worth looking out for. Perhaps my favourite of all of these is the announcement of enhanced audiobooks from Big Finish. So this is kind of Doctor Who, the audio novels, and it kicks off with Scourge of the Cybermen. The idea behind this range is quite simple. As producer David Richardson said, I grew up reading the Doctor Who Target novelizations. They were and remain to this day very close to my heart. And it occurred to me, what if we were to do audiobooks of brand new adventures that are authentic in every way to the era? Scourge of the Cybermen is written by Simon Gurrier and kicks off the Doctor Who audio novels range. The six-hour epic tells this terrifying story of the third Doctor and Sarah Jane Smith as they battle the cybernetic monstrosities on a future off-world sea base. And it's read by John Culshaw. There's quite a bit of potential for the audio novels range, so I really hope that it gets picked up and uh, by the audience and, and embraced, because um, that has considerable potential. So, Gareth Kavanagh, occasional quasi-regular on the podcast with a K. He has been very busy during late 2020 and very early 2021 uh, with Cutaway Comics. I'm just going to hit play now, bring this in, and let you listen to Gareth and I discuss Cutaway Comics, Eldrad, Omega, possibly even Brian Blessing. Now, I was reading through SFX magazine a couple of days ago, and I stumbled upon the name. It said Gareth Kavanagh. So to find out why he's in SFX magazine, I've got him on the phone. Gareth, how are you? Hello. Hello. Yes, I'm OK. Good. You know, it's, it's only here, the 820th of January. Um, <laughs> feels like it's gone on forever, doesn't it? But, but yes, I'm, I'm OK. I'm, I'm thankfully, you know, keeping busy. Lots of bit, lots of plates, lots of projects, um, including the projects that were in SFX, which is, is lovely. Yes. Um, th- the headline, uh, th- this will just help me summarise this very quickly. The Omega Man, Mark Griffiths and John Ridgway are bringing back Time Lord Satan Omega in a new comic series from Cutaway Comics. That's right. And yeah, issue one is out now. So uh, Cutaway Comics is a line of... Uh, spin-off comics from from the Doctor Who world so it it sort of is Doctor Who but it's not Doctor Who for the lawyers listening Doctor Who is kind of unique in the original run in that you know virtually all of the characters um, that were created for a particular story generally speaking belong to that um, to that writer so obviously the BBC owned uh, the Doctor the Companions the TARDIS Gallifrey anything that was created 
by the staffers who were on staff for for the BBC were is theirs, but that leaves a lot of things that isn't. And obviously, Omega was the um, was the villain created um, the super villain, probably Doctor Who's first super villain created for the three doctors by Bob Baker. And he is the focus of our first set of spin-off comics um, about him called Omega. Now, that alone is a great idea, but it's not the first one that you've done, is it? No, no, that's true. We've already two issues into um, Lytton, which was a um, which is a sort of mercenary character from 1980s Doctor Who created by Eric Sayward. A great character, sort of proper hard as nails gangster soldier of fortune played by Morris Colburn, who was in Resurrection of the Daleks. And then was so popular, they brought him back for Attack of the Cybermen. So, yeah, that was the very first one we did. And that's that's a project that's been sort of knocking around as an idea that I had for several years. And then I approached Eric at an event and then we, we did a deal and then we got the scripts and then we finally got art done. And it's um, it's a long, long, long process is is comics. It's got more in common with film because it just seems to take forever. Um, but that's out now, and that's Lytton in London gangland Soho in the 1970s. So that seems to have been well received, and we'd always envisage three comics as this sort of first wave uh, where we just try different things out. So the first was Lytton, the second was Omega, which is out now, and the third is Paradise Towers from the uh, Sylvester McCoy story. So it's a sort of sequel 25 years after the Doctor and Mel leave. What happened to Paradise Towers? What happened to the people there? So that's going to be out in the summer and the Kickstarter is going to be out in April. So we're having a lot of fun with that, must be said. It's a, it's a great, great, great fun story, that one. And um, I mean, what's the reaction been? Because you used crowdfunding to back this, didn't you? Yes. Um, completely by accident. I've got to <laughs> say... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I'm always one to put my hands up and use that great Doctor Who word serendipity, which of course we all know means happy accident. And Kickstarter came about. I mean, it was it was a sort of it was back in last July when I knew we had a big feature coming in Doctor Who magazine, and we were and we were gearing up to publish the first issue of Lytton in sort of August September, and. I was working on getting a big website ready, so a big um, web shop and information. And God, I, I don't have to tell you, websites are big, complicated things that take a long time to get going. And, and I knew I had to have the website ready for when DWM was out. In fact, probably two days before DWM was out, because subscriber copies have this irritating habit of arriving early. And I thought, well, I really need a website for people to look at this all with toast because they'll read it and go that's interesting if they like the idea they'll click online and then oh i'll buy that but if they can't do that then you're depending on them to remember and so we worked towards getting this ready and then my webmaster turned around a week out and said oh yeah that website sorry it's not gonna be ready in time we've hit a hitch with the e-payments and i thought oh bugger so rather than sort of cobble it together i thought maybe kickstarter might do the trick and i literally looked at it as a shop window and I thought, well, that's an extra shop window. And then I was talking to another couple of people. I saw a piece by John Freeman on Kickstarter um, on LinkedIn. And he was talking about the experience of a comic publisher who was saying, because there's no um, events and comic cons, they can't actually meet their clients and their customers anymore. So they were going, Kickstarter's a good, good way to sort of get the word out about a project. And... Um, and 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 sort of let people interact with you. And I thought, yeah, you know, that's a good idea. I can see that. So there was, it was building. And then the final one was there was an artist we were working with, one of the comic artists um, on, on Lytton's covers. And he said, well, and surely you're doing Kickstarter. And I went, well, no. And he went, idiot. And he <laughs> called me an idiot about three times. Idiot. Why aren't you doing Kickstarter? And I said, well, we don't need it. You know, he said, well you know you don't understand this do you he said said there is and he's true and i know this now he said there is a whole range of customers on kickstarter who you would never reach who will never know about your the project you're doing who are who are now looking for indie comics to back and they will happily back new new projects that they like the look of and he said you've got a great project you should do it so 
Um, so all of that kind of added up. And I sort of, over the space of about three days, put together a Kickstarter thinking, oh, well, we might sell a couple of extra copies and it's an extra shop window. And blow me, we did rather well. And, and it completely turned on its head all of my thinking about comics and how we get these things out. And now, you know, the advice was quite right. I was an idiot. And I think I would have been an idiot not to do Kickstarter. And now kick, a Kickstarter is built into every project we do now. So we took what we learned on Litter and we moved it on to Omega. And we, and we did even better with Omega. And now we'll take what we learned on Omega and we'll move that on to Paradise Towers in April. And it's um, it's just an incredible platform. I can't recommend it enough for anyone who's looking to do a comic or audio. or It doesn't work for everything, but for things that people can have in their hands and buy, it really works. So, so yeah, so uh, totally lucky accident. So thank God that website wasn't ready. Otherwise... I wouldn't have kickstarted Lytton and you know it would just be so much harder to get them projects out there. I guess there's an element to the Omega the Kickstarter element must have weighed heavily on being able to pull that off. Well yes and no. I mean I've been I mean John Ridgway start was commissioned and started in April May and was beavering away at three pages a week. So by the time we got round to doing this I think three and a half of the issues are already paid for. But it does give you a sense of what's possible. So you launch it, you go, here's our project. And, and we had a lot of good hooks. So we had, you know, great villain in Omega. We had an interesting setup because he, he's on Minyos. He's in the dying days of Minyos, which is from Underworld, which is in, also in Doctor Who legend because the Time Lords appeared and were worshipped as gods and kind of quite liked it and meddled and interfered with the world and buggered it up. So it's... it's 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 quite a Vietnam thing, and they they kind of flee in in disgrace, and and everything goes um, goes a bit wibbly after that. So I knew we had good hooks, and and so we had top villain, good writer. We had John Ridgway back, an art legend who you know was one of the the signature artists of Doctor Who in the eighties with Voyager. So I knew we had a good product. I'd added in a backup strip just so we could have a little play with the mandrels and, and Eden because I love mandrels and Eden, as as you will know. And it, I knew we had a good project, but what Kickstarter lets you do, because the way it's designed, is the whole thing is all about stretch goals. So depending on how high you get, you set goals where you unlock things. So it's like, you know, if we raise 10,000 quid, we'll will unlock this item if you raise twelve thousand quid which we did um you'll get an eldrad comic so it's a sequel to hand of fear that's set like minutes after the doctor and sarah leave to go to castria this is what happens in that that strange little nuclear power station that's left behind with with glenn houston in charge so glenn houston is now a comic star i'm sure he'd be thrilled <laughs> if he was still alive um so it lets us offer things that we wouldn't be able to offer. And the good thing is, is that, of course, if you don't make those targets for whatever reason, you don't offer them. But you need to be always offering exciting things so people have a, uh, have a reason to keep backing you and, and it generates an excitement. So we did all that and we did Eldrad and that's obviously very exciting. And then I needed to come up with something that was um, that had a real sort of wow quality to it for the last week and we and again all this is happening in kind of real time over the three weeks you're running it because you never quite know how you're going to get and i thought oh god we actually are doing quite well i, I think i need something quite good here so um, i thought well we're doing audio of omega and i thought well if we're going to do an audio adaptation of the omega comic we've got to have someone big for uh, omega and i thought it's got to be brian blessed <laughs> Now, I didn't come to that immediately. I mean, I did my research and yeah. and I thought, Brian Blessed, yeah, why not? And I did a little search on Twitter, which is always quite useful. You know, I mean, I know there's, there's, there's a lot of sort of strange people out on Twitter and horrible people and nasty people and angry people. But there's also lots of, you know, that's that's about three percent. And the rest of it are people just, you know, shooting the breeze. And I typed yeah. in Brian Blessed Omega. 
And he was a pretty regular suggestion. People said, oh, my God, wouldn't Brian Blessed be amazing as Omega? Oh, we need Brian Blessed as Omega. Yeah, yeah, Brian Blessed as Omega. So I thought, okay, it's kind of out there. We just need to get him. And I was, I noticed that he'd done The Wicker Man as an audio last year um, for a small company in Canada. It says he's playing Lord Summerall. And I remember thinking, yeah, bloody good casting that. Great yeah. casting. And I thought, well, okay, well, that that tells me that Brian is 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 interested in interesting projects that he'll work with indies, and you know, maybe maybe the Time Lord Satan, for want of a better word, will appeal to him. And you know, it turned out it did. We we opened a channel to his agent, and within a week, we had a deal. He, he'd seen the script. He said, I like what I see. Let's do the deal. Um, and then it turns out that, you know, I, I'd done all this big sell to him. And, and Brian is an enormous Doctor Who fan. And I didn't realize this. You kind of think, oh, well, he's been in Doctor Who and obviously he likes um, Flash Gordon. But then I turned up um, a feature. There's, there's like a really interesting little feature with Brian on the season 23 Blu-ray where he talks about Doctor Who and you think, oh, well, that's going to be, you know, ooh, you know, I, 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 you know, I used to like Doctor Who, but no, he, he talks about every single doctor in massive detail in order. I mean, some, he talks about how he met them and he knew them, you know, and, and there's a fun little conversation about how he wanted to chin Hartnell, um, in, in the corridors of BBC television center and what a horrible, you know, um, miserable man he was, but, he he was able to talk about individual stories and characters uh, over the entire run up to sort of David Tennant. So I thought, oh, bloody hell. Well, he's a fan. I don't need to explain to him who Omega is and why he's important. He obviously knows. He's watched them all. And and so it be. So, so that's something that we're recording in the summer. But that certainly helped. That put rocket boosters under us for, for the last week. And... And and I guess that's bringing it full circle. That's where SFX picked up on the story that, you know, this little comic company from Manchester has got Brian Blessed to play, you know, the the the, the Satan of Doctor Who. It's it's audacious. It's crackers. It's wonderful. <laughs> well, I I've learned that there is nothing wrong with asking. There's nothing wrong with asking. And if you ask in the right way at the right time and yeah. you're willing to show that you're professional and that you've done your best to make this a lovely experience for whoever this big person is. And at the moment, I think lots of these very talented people are literally sat at home. Um, sure. So the opportunity will never come again. So you know, I've been telling people this is our version you know that line at the end of Genesis of the Daleks where he goes, well, some things could be better with the Daleks. And even though this has been a, a completely horrible year, um, I also think that without this completely horrible year, the comics would never have happened. And we'd never have been able to, to be in a position to work with people like Brian Blessed because they're normally just so busy. It's exciting. I can't wait to hear it. I, I really, really, I mean, it's perfect. And many, many moons ago, when we first launched the podcast with the Kate, when it was just myself and Brian, we used to do, um, we'd do a little bit of news and then we'd do something very silly. Um, <laughs> so we would have, in every episode, we'd have Gerald Slavine farting in the background, handing us cups of tea and stuff. We would oh, have the man who the denies it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we'd have the man who denies Daleks can fly. And there was an interview with Omega as well, which is basically me oh, doing oh, the oh, voice. Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, I <coughs> it was more Brian Blessed than Storm, to be honest. So, I mean, it makes perfect sense that it should be Brian Blessed. I couldn't think of anyone else. And I know it sounds awful. Um, once I'd got that thought into my head, I couldn't think of anyone else who could do it. I mean, I know there are other people that could do it. Um, but I couldn't think of anyone else who would who wouldn't be second best. So at that point, I mean, if Brian had said no, get stuffed, um, I guess we'd have probably <laughs> found someone. Um, and who knows, they might have been extraordinary, but they wouldn't have been Brian Blessed. So 
I count ourselves very blessed to to have uh, landed our big fish. Yeah, definitely. It's fantastic. Did you ever see that um, mobile alarm app that he did? No. It's like he an alarm on your iPhone. Up, he? No. he shouts, wakey, wakey! Oh, it's fantastic. You can. See, I think there's a, like a trailer for it on YouTube that you can check out. I'm going to stick it in the show notes along with everything else that we've talked about in this week's show. Um, yeah, it's fantastic. Oh, I love he's Brian Blessed so much. He's such a treasure. <laughs> um, and yeah, he, he he absolutely adores Doctor Who. He loves Doctor Who. So so we're we're in great hands. Um, I mean, gosh, how do we top this one? I'm not quite sure, but we're thinking about it. We are definitely what? thinking about it. Oh, I, well, I mean, I'm not going to ask you that because I don't need to, I don't to uh, press you on anything. Mm. But anyone interested in Omega and Lytton and Paradise Towers, you can go to cutawaycomics.co.uk for more details. Yeah, that's good. Big thanks as ever to Gareth. And no doubt we will get him back on the show in a more... Uh, rounded capacity in the future for perhaps a commentary or discussion of some sort with james and brian also involved now we're very close to the end of this week's podcast with a k there is something that i need to um just reiterate um please leave us your reviews on apple Podcasts, as it is now called um doing so lets other people find the show and we think we've got a lot to offer still, even though we've been running since 2007. You can listen to that on uh, YouTube. You'll also find it, um, which is a thing that I'm working on at the moment, a big project I have to ensure that all of the podcasts with a K from 2007 to this week and beyond are available on iTunes, what is now called Apple Podcasts. It turns out that there are quite a few missing and quite a few of these are really good and we've got interviews that we want to share and other things from the past and it's been a bit of work uh, reviving these but there's uploading of files to www.casturbis.co.uk adding the images in making sure that the text is appropriate doesn't feature any bad links to an old website that we used to have you probably know what i'm talking about there and Overall, just making everything look nice and shiny, presentable. You will notice some changes on that site. I've already um, tarted things up a little bit. It looks really nice. I'm really pleased with the way that the podcast site looks now. Probably um, casterbus.co.uk probably looks the best that it has ever looked and comparative or comparable with casterbus.com at its peak in terms of visual impact. If you were with us back then, you'll remember that Orange was quite a feature of that site. Um, well, you know, I've brought that with us because I think it's an important element of the identity. Even though now we are a podcast rather than a news site and whatever else it was we were doing back then that we had time for and don't now. Um, it's that you know, that is clearly a lineage which, um, rather than ignoring, as the current owners of Castorus.com have, uh, we prefer to embrace. You'll also see other content appearing there over the coming months, but uh, none of that will happen until all 370 episodes of Casturbis Doctor Who podcast with a K are available on Apple Podcasts. And you'll notice that we don't, we basically, we don't know how many episodes there are. This is one of the problems. This is one of the reasons I'm doing it is there are, over 350 that much we know beyond that it gets a bit hazy you know how the doctor doesn't know how old he she is then it's it's like that so particularly you know back in the classic era when the doctor was you know thousands of years old one week 753 the next 953 750 whatever you know how long was the doctor in the vortex for on his way between spiridon and earth in 1974 as he's regenerating you know the Virgin New Adventures decided that he was there for fifty years. You know, we, we might have a miss another we might have fifty missing podcasts here. So um that is one of the reasons to make sure that the full um portfolio, if you like, for once of a less pretentious word, of our podcast is available for you to listen to, to delve into. 
that's the aim of this project at the moment. So, um, yeah. Do um, leave your reviews to help everyone find the podcast as it is now. And, you know, people will dip in and find the older shows as they are resurfaced. If you leave a new review, we will read it out. And if you have any comments about things that are taking place that we share on Facebook, they generally also get read out. Until next time, it's goodbye from myself. 